Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we're going to continue with our Mars mission and try and land that probe on the surface of Mars, but I had a question in the comments about whether our Phobos and Deimos probes were still okay landed on those bodies or whether they had uh, glitched. You can sort of see um, our Phobos probe is right there, it says landed on Phobos, but uh, the line <laughs> Is sort of wiggling, isn't it? That's the communication line to it, I think. So that's an interesting point. There is our probe that is in orbit. Uh, let's visit it and see what happens. Okay, so here we are, and it is indeed just fine. Uh, things seem to be all right with it. Uh, there is our orbiter, and or maybe that that's just uh, trash. Possibly, I don't know. I think that's our orbiter there. But, yeah, it's just sitting here, just fine. We visited our Deimos Pro before. We had a, another contract to get signs from Deimos. So we did do a, another visit to it to get some extra signs, I believe. But yeah, there's Mars. It's just sitting here. So it's fine. Um, it might be a little bit different if you use landing legs. Remember, the landing legs in 1.1.3, um, they, they, they were a little bit iffy. So... Yeah, you'll note that I, I landed directly on the probe core, this Ranger Block 1 core. Uh, that might be marginally more stable. Uh, yeah, because there's no suspension or anything like that. So keep that in mind, and maybe I will continue to do stuff like this and not use landing legs when it comes to Deimos and Phobos, though I don't know how much more stuff I'll be landing on them because it's so hard to just keep them there. I mean, you can see it's still, still sort of shifting on the surface. All right, but let's get back to what we're supposed to be doing. All right, so here we are, back with the bopper, and of course we can't decouple it and actually land the lander portion because that doesn't have any electric charge. So we're going to have to try and bring it all down together, and its parachutes aren't good enough for that. But, well, first we need to make sure it's... I don't know uh, why the, the lander um, po probe core is upside down, but... We constantly have to tell it to control from here, and of course that takes extra time. But yeah, we're going to have to use all of this. Uh, we're going to use the thrusters to bring us down. Um, good thing is uh, we have the main antenna here, so we're bringing it down with us. We're not going to lose communication as long as we're going to land on this side of Mars, which is the side we're coming down on. So that's alright. But uh, the parachutes aren't really configured for carrying all of this. So I'm just going to arm them and see what happens. Um, well, it looks like I can't right click on them very easily. Um, but that'll take another seven minutes, right? I was going, why isn't it showing it's armed? Well, yes. Signal delay on that as well. Um, we don't need the little antennae, the commutrons, active because those were to communicate back with this and we'll have to retract the solar panels which means we'll be a little bit short on electric charge potentially okay well um, it'll also be helpful to get the probes the fuel from here down since we're not going to be using it we had it locked already so we'll have 783 meters per second in total. Okay, uh, let me manually do the RCS. Stop us from rotating. And we will use the RCS to bring down our periapsis. We're pretty close to apoapsis right now. I have to remember we're oriented incorrectly. Uh, somebody had told me to do some settings in MechJab to to help the wiggle out. So after I do this retro burn, I'll do that. So we are trying to fulfill the transmitter recover scientific data from the surface of Mars. Of course, we want the science as well, not just filling the contract. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that uh, surface ablation laser light imager experiment would have been nice to do that 
Well, we've got a heat shield and all, so in theory we could come down pretty decisively. Our per periapsis is all the way over there, but we don't want to reach that. We want to sort of land around here somewhere. So we'll make our periapsis suborbital deliberately. I'm not suborbital, I mean uh, subsurface. Okay, well, hopefully that'll do it. Doesn't we might be in some trouble? Uh, let me take a look at what that uh, comment said for the settings. So I mean, uh, it was MacJeb attitude adjustment, and it was the these um, what you call it PID kind of derivative things. Okay, so that's 0.5. I want this to be 10. I want this to be 100. Okay. Well, there we go. We'll see how that works for us. Let's time warp until the control scheme is switched. Yes. Okay. So, basically we want to hold retrograde. We should maintain communication. We'll say negative surface velocity. Zero. And let's see if it does it better. Um, I'm half tempted to have these just rip off, but I guess I'll retract them now, and that'll take seven minutes, so it'll probably happen as we're entering the atmosphere. Well, this isn't too bad. Um, I'll, I'll also have roll zero right now, because I just don't like the look of it sideways. I'm wondering whether to bring these in. I guess it'll be more legit to toggle that. Anything else I should bring in? Well, we don't need the uh, radar altimetry sensor out, so let's uh, stop radar scan as well. Okay, that should do it. Our parachutes are armed. And it's looking good, yeah, those settings. So, uh, Marcio0214, thank you. This seems to work relatively well, as you said. Uh, not exactly where I wanted it, but this will be fine if we come down soon. Okay, so it's bringing it to the negative surface velocity marker. Handling the roll. That's very good. I mean, uh, so at least as far as realism overall is concerned. Uh, let's go with uh, these being the default settings then. Uh, I mean, or you could just make sure to set that properly. 0 0.5, 10, and 100 there. Okay. Physical time warp. Let's hope the parachutes are configured okay at least. But then again, I'll still have the engines to bring us down safely, hopefully. All our science is up here, except for the stuff that was purely orbital. So we can't really lose that top part or save that mass. It probably would be helpful for me to have surface info, because the surface of Mars tends to be rather high in terms of the real altitude. You can see the true altitude is 72 kilometers, whereas that's reading 82, so we'll sneak up on you if you don't have that. About 10 kilometers high. I suppose I could tell it to do science. I hope one was science. Well, just in case. Uh, log pressure data. It'll take, you know, the seven minutes and all, so. Impact data or record impact data. So that might be science done in the atmosphere, it might end up being science being done on the ground, depends if we get to the ground in a few minutes. Smart ASS isn't really holding us retrograde right now. It's a little bit low from that. But that's alright, we probably shouldn't heat up anyway. Oh, that was too early. Okay, we're gonna have problems. I'm just gonna... Well, I don't know if it's safe to jettison the heat shield at this point. Let's wait. I'll probably get, you know, shoved up against us anyway. Uh, that was probably misconfigured then, that parachute. 
That's not going to be helpful. I really don't want an imbalance in the parachutes. Well, we're at 20 kilometers real altitude, 2,000 meters per second still, but decelerating, so that's positive. You know what? If I uh, do Jess and Heat Shield, it probably will take seven minutes to do it anyway. Uh, I'll send the command. Yeah, yeah, I will. So we probably it'll probably happen after we've landed, and I'll be caught by surprise, and it'll be all bad. It'll probably make everything explode. Anyway, eight kilometers, seven kilometers. Okay, we have a bad deployment of a parachute again. Okay, um, let me try and manually do stuff here. Uh, okay, that parachute is holding, but it's sort of off to one side, so that's not great. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, no, that's gonna crash. Okay, so some badly configured parachutes there. And of course, you know, the, the probe was so heavy compared to what it was supposed to be. So it was a long shot anyway. Um, well, so we're gonna fail the transmitter recover scientific data from the surface of Mars unless we have another probe to do it with that's possible let's see well we have a little uber prober landed there I guess we can visit it again been landed at Mars for six years and 326 days let's see if it's still alright okay well here is our little uber prober we've probably done all the science we can do here Mars is lowlands I don't suppose we could hop a little bit and get to somewhere else. It'd probably be dangerous to do so. Uh, let's log temperature and log pressure data. And analyze telemetry. You never know. I could have forgotten something. It does have a connection back home um, somehow. I wonder how. Oh, it's uh, communicating through this Deimos Centaur Nico. That's handy. That's a nice relay. Okay. It might not have that link for long. Let's see. Still has the link. Well, I'll just uh, transmit. Someday, they're going to stop me from doing this in order to fill contracts. But that day is not today. In exchange, I'll try and hop. Uh, I'll s uh, Yeah. I guess we'll see if we can hop to another biome and uh, so this may not work ever again. I mean Mars is lowlands, we didn't have a biome map of Mars, we just had an altimetry scan. Yeah, probably this is not going to work very well. Come on, don't pause right there. She. Ah. Okay. Well, we lost something or another, but. And it's upside down now. Still has communication, though. But it's still in the Mars Lowlands. We tried. We tried. Okay. Well, surely the telemetry is different now. <laughs> uh, anyway, alright. Alright, well. It probably wasn't that lucrative a contract anyway. Let's check that out to see how much we cheated by. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal. The advance was 17,000, completion was 18,000, failure was uh, loss of 25,000 funds, and uh, we would only have lost two reputation if we had not fulfilled it. So it was a trivial thing, uh, more of a more of an issue to uh, hope that people solve that particular. Um, loophole in the whole contract system is all. I, maybe they've sol solved it in 1.2.2. I don't remember if I've tried that particular loophole in 1.2.2 yet. So maybe that's the thing. I'll have to remember to check that out. So our remaining uh, contracts are crew count record of 10. Not, not quite yet. But we're going to try and fulfill this crew duration record of 60 days uh, which doesn't expire and we'll get a million for so and plenty of reputation too. We're getting back up in our reputation and uh, other than that our remaining contracts are the the tough uh, Jupiter stationary orbit contract which we may fail 
but that's more of a loss in funds than a loss in reputation. Uh, though, you know, we've got 18 years, so there's still hope. And then the Saturn flyby mission, which is a little bit tighter, that we have to fulfill in six years or risk losing 1.5 million. So lots of risky business. Uh, I won't take any extra contracts just yet. Let me do the crew duration record first. Let's go up to our space station. All right, so here we are at Spaceport 2. And as you can see, we're starting the timer fresh. It didn't really count all the time that they've already been on the station. This is not great, but hey, uh, we'll, we'll proceed from here. As far as Tyke life support is concerned, the four crew members definitely have enough food, water, and oxygen. We don't technically have to bring them back. We will, at the end of the 60 days, bring two of them back in one of the capsules. So yeah, I think that'll be fine. And maybe we'll maintain some sort of crew rotation thing. All right, so uh, let me time warp through the 60 days and I'll come back to you. Oh wait, we time warped a few days. Uh, we got through eight days, well, seven days. But it looks like we have to take care of Jupiter Orbiter 2's maneuver note. I didn't notice that that was pending prior to the 60 days here. So we'll have to start the 60 days all over again. All right, uh, well, I've, I've already zipped up the save file, so I'll risk a jump to ship this way. Okay, um, delete on close. We have a maneuver. We seem to be late for the maneuver, oddly enough, even though we had the alarm. And is our probe in the right place? Right? This is a question we have to ask. The answer is not at all. Not at all. Now, if this was a Jupiter probe, it's definitely not got the encounter. So we've got a little bit of a problem here as far as our whole probery goes. They don't seem to be in the place they ought to be. This is inside Earth's orbit on this side. It's like something misscaled everything, right? It's like this orbit is smaller than it should be. If the system was smaller, it would make sense, but otherwise it's not actually encountering anything. And no, the 81 meters per second here isn't going to make a difference. Now, what would be the best thing to do with it now that we've now that it's messed up? Well, probably I wanted to do... I mean, there's no point in trying for the stationary orbit of Jupiter. Saturn flyby, we've already got stuff going to it in theory, right? That's assuming that these guys, when we get out to Saturn, see these two are ahead, well, that one's headed to Saturn. That's probably a spent stage right there. Which would be better, to go to Jupiter and continue to try it, given that um, we're a little bit off, a lot off. We could potentially do a flyby still. Or to go to Saturn, which we could, mm, that, that might be tougher. Uh, see, uh, here's our apoapsis over here. So we were probably supposed to uh, encounter Jupiter, probably already actually. Um, instead, we're on this side. I don't remember how the this mission was originally supposed to be configured. But if we boost out from here, which would be the ideal situation, we're not going to encounter Jupiter. Because it's already ahead. It's two years there. Jupiter's orbit is uh, 12 years. So in two years, it'll probably be over here. So what we really need, to, and you can see it costs 3,000 just to boost it like that. So we're going to have to take more than 3,000 just to get a flyby. Oops. Yeah, look at that. Jupiter will already be over there by the time we get over here. Hmm. So there's a strange bug that we've got. Things don't seem to be in the place they ought to be. Let's take a look at what this was supposed to be. Well, it's got RTGs and everything. It's an expensive probe. Not a cheap thing at all. Lots of science. We've got four RTGs down there and then two more on the probe itself. Oh, and two here. Well, this is just a cornucopia of RPGs, isn't it? Uh, that's unlocked, that's unlocked, uh, this is unlocked. So we're counting most, of, well, pretty much all of the Delta V. 
in that 6,708. Oh wait, that's that's locked. Okay, we've actually got 7,200. It's fine, we keep it locked for now. Hmm. Okay, uh, Earth to Jupiter transfer window is 136 days. So we could launch something else. But we'll have to give this some pause. I mean, you know what? Maybe I should like restore the zip file that I made, the persistent file, and see if it's still in this messed up orbit if we go to the tracking station. Let me do that first. Okay, well, no such luck. Um, it's definitely messed up. And it was messed up before before everything else happened in this episode so uh, yeah okay well that's disappointing I think I'm just going to have to leave it be yeah this is all very weird but um, alright let's kill that node and the thing with transfer window planner is it assumes that you have an origin planet rather than just taking your current location. So I have to use Mechjib's Maneuver Planner and I just want Advanced Transfer to another planet. Oh, let's select Target. Let's assume Jupiter. I mean, is there another location? Maybe maybe we should... I mean, I think this might have been trying to do a slingshot around Jupiter a gravity assist around Jupiter to get somewhere else. That would have been good. Um, where we're at right now, maybe we could get out to Neptune. Our inclination's not that much. To oh, wait. Uh huh. Well, there's a Uranus thing. And how long is that? 27 years. Well, that'll give you an idea that the Neptune one probably isn't uh, too soon either. With a correction, we could probably hit Uranus quicker. How much Delta V are we talking about? 6,000. Not great, but... Okay, the Neptune thing would probably be the most extreme thing we could do. Well, that's in 21 years, if we want to go to Neptune. Considering the orbital issues, chances of that working are slim. And of course, we're planning to use the Voyager probe to hit all of them. Um, how about Pluto? I mean, Voyager is not going to hit Pluto. It's a long shot, literally. But why bother? It's 37 years out. Yeah, let's not do that. Okay, forget, forget. I'll just go, all right, um, let's start with each of them in turn and see what's reasonable as far as Mechjeb is concerned, maybe. It's not really doing anything. Well, home and transfer to target. 8,000, not really what I want to be doing. Well, there's the 6,400 for Uranus. Okay, whatever. We'll do that. Unlock the rest of the fuel. Well, I mean, uh, the node's in a year. Interestingly enough. Thought we had a good time right now, but I guess we'll wait the year. <laughs> Who knows what kind of orbit this is going to be in by that time. Actually, uh, 672 days it looks like. That's a while. Okay, let's go back to the station and do that stuff now. Okay, final day. Final six hours, in fact. Time warping, as you see. And wait time over. Alright, and uh, no problem with electric charge. The solar panels are doing fine. Um, we do have quite a uh, low amount of hydrogen and oxygen and remember that's for the fuel cells on the pods but uh, the pods should have enough electric charge to come down without running the fuel cells internally they have uh, 14,400 
and let's just check that both pods are charged up they are okay so that should be fine for one orbit which is all we need for them to deorbit and uh, of course they have the solar panels until they get rid of the service module all right yep everything seems to be proper we have our contract complete and our funds okay time to decide who needs to go back home uh, I think we can get rid of curve alarm clock and well where are they exactly um, uh, it looks like they're already in their pods I never actually moved them out of their pods which one's been here longer well this side is lacking one solar panel. I think I'd rather remove this one first. So whoever's in here gets to go home. That's how it'll go. As far as how much life support we have left, still like a, almost a year's worth. 11 months. So that's the situation there. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's just get on with it. Uh, hope I'm not doing anything wrong. Plenty of Delta V on board. Could have probably transferred some of that to the station instead. Must remember to do that in the future. Not that the station has much room for food uh, for uh, fuel right now. It does have enough to have can uh, contained some of that Delta V though. Anyway, it's not the hugest amount. At least I mean, this is not like the lunar version of these spacecraft so as usual we'll wait until we're over Australia deorbit there and then come back home it occurs to me that we did carry some of our life support with us here probably how much how much life support do we carry for two people about a month so for four people, uh, so the spaceport is probably down by two weeks worth. Retro burn. Sixty-eight kilometers will do fine. This is just from low Earth orbit after all. And is there anything we would like to transfer up? Food, water, and oxygen look fine. I guess we could top off the oxygen. Liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen have already boiled off, but there's still some up here. We could use for the fuel cells if absolutely necessary. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the trunk now. And at the same time, let's unlock these fuels. Okay. Separation. Really hate those pauses. Okay. Now surface negative relative velocity. Execute. And let me just make sure that the MechJab settings are as they were. Yes. Because we want stability. And in this case, we also want descent mode. Let's turn that on. Guess we'll activate CO2 scrubber as well. Should have done that already. And we can arm the parachutes. Okay, well, there's the United States there. We should end up either in the Gulf of Mexico or in the Atlantic Ocean. Our uh, service module is rather close, about 400 meters away only. But we're just now entering the atmosphere. We'll keep an eye on it as it explodes, of course. I don't need this to control pitch anymore because that's going to be all the scent mode. Let's make sure the roll gets controlled properly. All right, we are clearly over Mexico right now. Cruising right along. 
pretty darn quick not appreciably smell well, a little bit of slowing down but not a whole lot decided to have smart ASS hold pitch for a bit because we were drifting up again and I didn't want accidental heating of the top or any sort of flippiness our service module is now almost a kilometer away so waiting for it to blow up okay sounds like we're starting to get service module disintegration out there yep and it looks like I should probably disengage the pitch control here it's using too much anyway interesting it leaves the sort of pitch control on even though I disengaged it so I don't know let me try and hmm I mean see I mean it's still using pitch authority even though I here execute told it not to okay well now it's slowly getting back to almost flat but it's still like there's still some tiny bit of trim there okay casually passing below 75 kilometers and smart ASS is doing a great job thanks to the new attitude adjustment settings so that's very good it's not rocking back and forth or doing anything weird pitch is now flat so that that part is solved apparently we do have ablation going on interestingly uh, even though ablation is going on we haven't reached a point where a charred ablator is building up and here come the flame effects oh, come on yep uh, well it might end up being a Caribbean dunk for our Kerbals. I mean, looks like we're passing straight along the Cuba, um, Haiti, Dominican Republic, maybe Puerto Rico line, rather than going north or south of it. Okay, below 60 kilometers, below 6,000 meters per second not uh, slowing down as much as I would like normally I would uh, by this point I would like um, the velocity to be less than 10 times uh, less than a tenth of the altitude that's sort of the way I like to go now it's crossed below I sure hope we don't accidentally send the Kerbals to Guantanamo Bay here well it's awful close I suppose uh, splashing down off the coast of a naval base probably means that retrieval of the capsule will be easier. I guess that's a positive. Yeah, we didn't even get to the whole chart ablator thing. Didn't actually use much ablator, but then again, again, this is a lunar rated heat shield, and we were not coming back from the moon, so plenty of margin there. And uh, we'll probably be trying to retrieve that heat shield as well. Very little of our Arizona N204 was used. Now that Smart ASS can control it better, we might not have to carry so much of it up there. Power wise, we're still fine. Okay, we have initial parachute deployment of the drug chutes. Initial deployment of the main chutes. Smart ASS off. And full deployment of the main chutes brings us to 5.2 meters per second. And now we're just waiting for a splashdown. Okay, wow, what a splash. Oh, uh, don't, don't sink. Let's recover. Okay. 
Uh, very close to the KSC on the recovery, and of course our two Kerbals got some extra uh, experience, so very good. Alright, well at least that worked. And this was mostly an episode of fulfilling things that we already had underway, or um, as the case may be in the case of Jupiter Orbiter 2, uh, not quite fulfilling it because of the same bug that we had with this Phobos Centaur Nico uh, probe. Why this is happening, I don't know. Maybe I'll clean up some more of my um, persistent file and we'll hope that things go better. Maybe cleaning up the persistent file on a previous occasion got things mixed up somehow. Uh, I don't know how that would be, but you never know with Kerbal. Uh, yeah, anyway, so we do have this Mars-class vessel that will be completed soon, but that won't be able to launch until 553 days, that window there. What we do have is this Earth to Jupiter transfer window coming up, and, well, there is this Science Day from Space Around Jupiter, but that's not really going to fund it. Not, not if I want, I mean, I guess I could do a really tiny probe, but that's no fun, right? Um, we're at 1974, so we're not at the point where we should do Voyager yet, though we can start thinking about it. Uncrewed Ganymede landing. Well, they sure do want to pay us a lot for that. Um, they give us nine years. That could really kill us, though. 7.9. Uncrewed IO landing I'm definitely not going to do, because that's... That takes more Delta V than the Ganymede landing. And that's even worse on the failure. Wow, though. Um, I'm going to have to review the whole Delta V situation and try and build something like that. But maybe, maybe that's not a bad idea. I mean, we've got... Now, there's this specific... Oh, this is another bad orbit around Jupiter, though. Uh, look, there's 88,000 uh, kilometers. That's really close to Jupiter. And they're not giving us that much for it. This other one that we already have active. Come on. This one is basically the same orbit, but they gave us much more to do it, so... Don't forget that. Anyway, so I'll look into that. We have to build some new stuff and I'll see what kind of mission I want to do. Um, we've done station stuff, we've done interplanetary stuff, maybe we should go back to the moon. That would be more of a short-term thing. I mean, we can maybe take care of that even before this Jupiter transfer window. We could send something over to the moon, maybe a station around the moon could be done. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to think about what I want to do next. And I can receive your suggestions. So I'll wrap it up there. Oh, uh, just a little note on uh, Sunday, I will be doing a sort of a on my live stream on Twitch. We're going to collaborate on a Realism Overhaul career with an uh, install that's based on the tutorials I did for how to build a Realism Overhaul RP0 install. So the way it'll work is that the viewers, I'll be NASA, and the viewers are basically going to be contractors like Boeing, Lockheed, etc and I'm going to say, we're going to pick up contracts and I'm going to say, okay, um, uh, I'll see who, uh, see proposals for craft to fulfill the contract and then I'll accept the craft. Uh, people will get the in-stream currency, which is struts. Uh, I'll pay them in struts in order to use their craft to fulfill the contract and then we'll proceed in career mode like that. That's the idea and we'll start a fresh career for that. We won't use this. Uh, and of course if people want to have parts that aren't already in the install I'll consider that when that when that comes up. Alright, so that, that's the idea. We'll start that on Sunday and continue from there. Uh, probably it'll all go chaotic and uh, messed up and there'll be glitches and who knows. Because that's KSV 1.2.2 after all. Uh, but we'll see. Who knows. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.